Hello. Okay. I think we are live. Um, this is exciting here to talk about chain fire. I'm just waiting for it to actually like pop up over on, on YouTube. We've got a few people waiting for us, so this should be fun. Um, it is taking longer than usual. Oh, here we go. Okay. I think everything's we're... lagging. Everything is lagging tonight. <laughs> okay. What we got? Everyone's here. working on my speed right now. <laughs> yes. Oh gosh. Hello. I'm glad you've been looking forward to it. Yes. This is, this should be fun. Hey, Jessica. Hello. I'm glad people have been liking these. I feel like people have been slowly finding them too. Hey, Priscilla. Hi, Megan. Um, I don't know about you, but I've been getting like random comments on old lives, which isn't bad. Like, like I feel like people are finding them. You're muted. Because my computer is lagging so much, I hit me unmute and then it didn't do anything. So I hit it again <laughs> and then it muted me again. Oh no. Um, so this is this is working out really well. It's gonna be um, an exciting night. What I was gonna say was I have so many comments right now that if anyone is commenting on my on the old sort of truth lives, I will not see it. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a few here and there. Oh yeah, your videos have been like Yeah. I noticed a, like taking a off. It's how how is that? It's a lot. A lot. <laughs> I just was not expecting this, prepared for this, anticipating it, don't know what to do about it. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll have to talk about that. Wow. Yeah, I saw a couple n uh, numbers on uh, one of your recent videos, and I was like, what? Yeah. I okay. was, that was my reaction as well. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, excuse me? What are you doing? <laughs> you are confused. <laughs> like, I am not the person who gets, like, 20-some thousand views on a video. No, but, I mean, it's great. No, um, I mean, it, it really is one of those, like, you knocked on the wrong door. Mm -hmm. Like, this is, these are not the droids you were looking for. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing here. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Uh, interesting. I love this. Found you from a random Faith of the Fallen review. See, the, mostly the comments That's that I've great. gotten are that. comments on the Faith of the Fallen one that are, like, mad because, like, I thought this was the Faithful and the Fallen. And I'm like, I'm sorry you're dumb, but that's not my fault. <laughs> like, <laughs> why would you bother commenting that you were stupid? Like, I didn't, I didn't missell this. I didn't, like coyly clickbait it like this is the name of the book and i'm sorry that's confusing for you <laughs> that is so strange well and then we had last month was exciting because we didn't think about the fact that the the title was naked Empire. i thought about it a little i just didn't think it would quite have that oh effect. my gosh like, that was i that actually was, was more trip, worried about man. youtube flagging it than about what happened random people yeah that was uh that was a, an exciting journey yeah hey Hi Beth. Yeah. <laughs> Priscilla, you were you were there <laughs> last month. <laughs> so thankfully, um this this time, chain fire, I think we should be we should be in much better shape. So hey Renee. I was hoping. Uh so what did you think about this one? Well, certainly better than Naked Empire, but that is not a high bar. That's so. true. I thought it was much better. This was I feel like this was back to the things I like about the series. More so, but yeah. it is also feeling like the last few books have felt this way, but this one uh, in particular, is it feels like season 10 of a show that probably should have ended at season three. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> where you're like, we're trying to find a reason to still have a conflict, you know, where you're like, okay, yeah. you could just go, you could just die gracefully, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that's that's reasonable. I didn't mind that much because I feel like it. I mean, it's definitely me... better than Naked Empire. So oh, like... so much better. I mean, that's not hard to do. But I was like, okay, I'm having fun with this. I wish there was more Caitlin, but otherwise, I 
Well, I but thought there would literally be no Kaylin whatsoever for like the next three books there for a second. I was like, is that what we're doing with these three books? Is it going to be Kaylin free? <laughs> Thank God, no. Hopefully we'll get more of her in the next one. I mean, it's Probably. literally called Phantom. I'm guessing that she's the Phantom. Well, one of them's also called Confessor. No, isn't Confessor next? Oh, is it? I think it's maybe Confessor you might be right. Nice. Uh, you you it, you very well may be right. I think I put Phantom on my TBR, but I may have been wrong. Well, we'll or I put Confessor on my TBR, which I did, and I may have been wrong. Okay, somebody <laughs> else said <laughs> they it thought out. it was Phantom. We'll figure it out. Uh, we should probably do that because uh, people in the live show might want to know what <laughs> it should be. I need to issue an apology video. Uh, <laughs> I lied and I'm sorry. Right. Okay, hold on. Let's see. Stupidity brought me. Stubbornness will keep me. Phantom here. is book 10. <laughs> so, th yeah. So that should be right. Book 10, right? I mean, that's, yeah, Phantom. Yeah. Conf I think Confessor is the last one. Okay. So. There we go. Okay. That's what we're doing. Um, Jessica liked Chain Fear. Ch chain Fire. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Yeah, uh, I, I thought it was decent. Although, I'll be honest, I did a lot of skimming because mm -hmm. the further we get, the more he does the recap stuff. And I'm just like, I, if I was reading these as they came out, I would probably appreciate it. But I'm not reading them as they come out. So I would just skim it. I mean, that's fair. I was listening to the audiobook, so I was just kind of like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, but I mean, I do always appreciate authors who do recap. I literally just days. skipped entire paragraphs and I was like, <laughs> recap, recap, recap. <laughs> there was a lot of recapping. Um, yes, Wait, it was but, a huge okay, sorry, just technical. Hmm. Is it lagging for you when you look at me? Because it's lagging so bad for no, me on my end. It okay. is not. Well, as long as it's like coming through fine because it looks to me like i'm doing like uh, the robot or something where it's oh no <laughs> very it like look, it looks it looks fine to me okay, how does fine. it look to everybody in the audience because i don't know i mean to me it looks fine because but... i was if it's bad then i could try like going out and coming yeah. back in again i mean it looks it looks fine on my end so people let us know in the comments how liana is looking yes uh, you let us know how liana <laughs> is how looking. looking tonight but keep it respectful <laughs> Exactly. Um, <laughs> people are saying you don't look like a robot it looks like a regular video okay um yeah so i think we're good um where was i on the comments okay about how good i look yes yes, yes those ones um thought you're gonna say this felt like a recap episode before the season finale i mean Yes. I was just glad that it, we were getting a normal amount of soapboxing. Characters were acting relatively normal and it was like more fun <laughs> and not yeah. awful. <laughs> so. And because this is the first book that I hadn't read before of the ones we've been reading this year, mm -hmm. um, then it was fun for me to be like, oh, I, I don't know what the answer to this is. I don't Mm -hmm. I, I can actually be guessing about it instead of being like, oh, I think I remember it's this. Yeah. I was, was like, all... oh, I, I don't know. I think it's this. I'm guessing it's this. Yeah. It was all brand new. Um, yes. Okay. Struggle through. That's, that's fair. And I will say in addition to the recaps and everything, so that could all be cut, you know, in my opinion. Um, but also in things that are not recaps, like this book could still have been substantially cut down. Like it was a lot of, I was like, yeah. by the second half, I was like, okay, now the plot begins. But the first half had a lot of just like, hmm, yeah, really. I mean, you're not wrong because I, I feel like uh, up till this point, we've pretty much resolved most of the, like whatever the current plot point for the book is, we resolved by the end of the book and this one we did not. So it, in that sense, it definitely felt different. Um, I hope it all yes yes people keep calling yeah i'm hoping we're getting a lot more kaylin i feel like we probably will in phantom given this it seems i don't i don't know i have i do have some questions about how they're able i mean this is always true but like i guess sometimes with believability but like how do they do the spell that just like remove like removes the memory of somebody it, i actually it, 
that part doesn't bother me as much as I'm like all the other stuff they did. Like they who had time to go find a body and then bury it and make it look like Kaylin. I'm like, when did <laughs> when did you have the time to do that? I mean, I feel like that must have been something else. Well, maybe it was them. I guess it could have been. It them. said it was them. Did it? Oh, I missed that. Well, part, part of her lo- look. Okay, this too. Somebody who has, has a stab wound and is like, I will confess to you, but I will confess to you in paragraphs and paragraphs of exposition <laughs> while I'm like, oh, but the pain, but okay, but let me expound upon my evil master plan in all the detail. I'm like, I think you'd be giving us cliff notes here. <laughs> like, look, we did it. It was us. This was our plan. Can you fix my bleeding stomach <laughs> no yeah i mean that's 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 fair i yeah i you know what it reminded me of it's a wonderful life yeah 100 percent. Okay. i think i thought that too when okay. i was reading it i was like so this is a, this is it's a wonderful life. <laughs> this is basically like ye fantasy it's a wonderful life <laughs> yeah but uh, but I I felt like Richard was being very Richard, like, no, I know the truth and I'm going to convince everybody else of what it is. But I am also a little disappointed because, of course, like, you know, while this is happening, you're you know that Kaylin is a real thing. So you're like you're you never doubt Richard. So you're like, OK, but so what did happen? What could have caused this? Who's behind mm-hmm. it? Right. And why would they have not just who did it, but like what reason could they have to have done this? Um, and I actually was hopes thinking slash hoping that it wasn't you know what it ended up being that never occurred to me but i thought that they specifically needed kaylin out of the picture because of the way that like her presence in prophecy influences events and by taking her out of play and taking her out of all the parts of prophecy that she affects Mm -hmm. then now that will change the course of prophecy and make events flow in a way that's beneficial towards for jagang like that's what i thought was happening and that yeah. for the fact that they messed up and Richard does remember is like the flaw in the system. And that kind of is the the flaw that catches them. But it was not like their plan wasn't really about Kaylin, you know, it wasn't. No, like, it was about the getting the boxes being, of Warden. The prophecy stuff was like incidental to that. Right. I thought that was like, that was the plan. <laughs> no. But and that would like lend credence to all the times Richard was like, no, like, it's not just because I'm in love with this woman. Like, it's important that she's gone. Um, and that's why I was like, yeah, I'm betting mm-hmm. that, that there's this, that's why she's gone is because they were like, look, we figured it out. Like we keep trying to beat Richard, but if we just take Caitlin out, then all of a sudden events flow in a way that we win. And yeah, that's not, what but I was. feel like that's too smart. Whereas instead it was that, oh, we know we smart. need, yeah. It's like, we know we need a confessor to be able to put the boxes of Orden in Which play. Which is why it felt like, so oh, this is... feel the confessor. I was like, oh, this is season one that we're just doing over again. Okay, yeah. cool. Not a new idea then. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and then, I like, the mystery around what did she leave in place of that last box of Orden? And it's the carving thing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it was bit, it was very like convenient and MacGuffin-y. It was, which you know, I guess is par for the course to a certain point. Um, Priscilla has less patience for soapboxing than the beginning of the series. That's that's fair. I mean, he really toned it down for this book, though. I feel like somebody probably yelled at. Well, him I just after feel like make it part of why this feels like you know the tenth season of a show that should have ended at three is because like he reached his final form like seven books ago so like there isn't much growth that's like needed or going on with his character Mm -hmm. so like he has obviously in this book like he was presented with a problem to overcome but i mean like he leveled up in terms of ability he leveled up in terms of like position of power and he leveled up in terms of like being confident in who he is and knowing his worldview and so he did all that growing already he like knows Mm -hmm. who he is has his like shit together has his powers, has his love, has his, like, kingship or whatever. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, so where do you go from there? Like, take away the love. <laughs> you know, it's like he, you yeah. already, like, he, like, did his character arc. Like, there's mm-hmm. no, there's nothing left, which is why oftentimes later seasons of shows do that. Because, like, they'll take a character through an arc. And then the only way to keep the show going is to, like, undo that, to undermine mm. that arc. So they have to, like overcome it again yeah (laughs) become themselves again and you're like i feel like we did this Mm -hmm. 
No, I get that. But Jigang has not been defeated yet, Liana. Oh so. my god. <laughs> He's like the, the villain that will never end. Um, it's very Thanos. It is. It's true. By the time we got to Thanos in those movies, I was like, I do not care. <laughs> yeah. I like, yeah, I like Kara too. I think, in, you know, I mean, I think some of the side characters in these books are great. Which is why, I mean, because Richard already did all of his leveling up, Mm -hmm. I wish that more of the books took the path of Pillars of Creation and, like, Mm -hmm. just featured other characters as the main characters. And then Richard is around still because it's, like, his universe and he's still, like, the team you're fighting on. But, like, we could do more books that are from someone else's perspective as far as I'm concerned. Well, which I wonder if that's where the Nikki Chronicles came from is people being kind of like, okay, we think we're done. (laughs) Every time I hear Nikki Chronicles, I just think of Cat Williams' stand-up, The Pimp Chronicles. And I hear the, like, introduction that they, like, voice over for, like, him being brought on stage, but would replace the word with Nikki. <laughs> and I just can't take it seriously. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, th- see, this is interesting. Somebody set- first semi-doubted Richard. Like, ah, Richard Galen. is always like the special perfect one who always I knows mean, the truth because yeah. he is the true seeker, sword or no sword. That's kind of how I feel too. But to like at <laughs> at absolute most, Richard might be a little misguided about like the nature of something or like how far to take something, which we really haven't seen since Stone of Tears. But like, yeah, he's never actually wrong about something, except in Naked Empire I, and IMO. <laughs> Except in Naked Empire, what? I thought he was wrong about things in Naked Empire. But I mean, in the universe of the In books, the universe, like, he's, he's not, never yeah. wrong. No, it's true. It's true. Um, hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think, well, and this is why I would say that, it, it, that yeah, like the subtle ways different characters were different without Kalen's influence is interesting, but this is why I'm saying it's like, it's a wonderful life. That's exactly like it's basically that plot of like if someone didn't exist in the world here is how everybody would be so different and lives would not be as good and i this is like that with kaylin and it was um i don't know fun is the word but i feel like you know when richard is trying to get them to be like don't you remember this don't you remember this and like how like how do you how do you remember the events of like this one specific thing where she would like did a thing that you should remember right. and i feel like when he starts doing that then you as the reader are like well, how about this and this and this? Why aren't you mentioning this, this, and this, Richard? So by the end of the book, he probably has. Like, he goes through quite a lot of those. But yeah. you're like, yes, yes, that one. How the F do you explain that? And yeah. then they do. And you're like, dang it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They're like, they're like, well, it's how should I know? You're the one who does the magic. Why would I? <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, huh. That was my theory the first time everything oh see that would probably actually have been more interesting if that was the case like what you were thinking liana about the prophecy the idea but that, oh, like, i wasn't actually... thinking so much that like richard crumbles without her although obviously he does but more that like events themselves like all the prophets because like she's been mm-hmm. featured in prophecy several times right and so if like none of those prophecies existed slash went that way because she's not around so Ooh. they couldn't have then there's you know that's a, a butterfly effect that like by taking her out um you know it's kind of like you know dr strange being like i've, I've looked at all the possibilities and this is the only one where we win so mm-hmm. if they looked at the, all the possibilities and they're like take out caitlin that's how we win like we looked at like the many yeah. myriad like butterfly effects of how we can alter events and who to take out and who to change and whatever and this is how we win um, yeah I mean, which I think would have been interesting, but even so, I th- I I do think it's interesting how much prophecy is impacted by her, and I don't think Goodkind really spun this out in the way he could have, but it's interesting how much prophecy is impacted by her, given that Richard is always the one everyone's talking about. You know, like, everybody focuses on his role in the prophecy and not how important Kaylin actually is. Yeah, because she's not the bringer of death. Right. And it was, I did like that, even though it's kind of cheating because he can 
be like, well, it's not really them. It's like kind of like alternate universe version, bizarro world versions of them. But the idea that Anne, Nathan, and Zed would kind of become almost the villains of the story for a second there, that yeah. they haven't turned against Richard, but they're like, because they're so committed to prophecy or whatever that like they become kind of antagonists. I thought that was cool. Like that's not something uh, yeah. done before. No, I agree. I thought that was really interesting. Where literally they, you know, Nikki is the one who saves him by telling him the truth. Yeah, that was. Which for a second there, when like we cut to her doing that, I was like, wait, no, is this part of the plan? Is like, yeah, is no, she confessing I was worried to him? Too. Is, is that part of it? Yeah, no, I was, I was worried. I was like, oh no, what's going to happen? Um, let's see. Richard being magically in Temple of the Winds. Huh. Thought he was going to create a civil war in the old world interesting yeah i don't know i don't know that honestly i don't think good kind had enough plans for <laughs> like you know what i mean like i don't think he had a game plan for the series going as long as it did i think he has things he wants to talk about and some ideas and then he sort of figures it out is the vibe i get whereas i think this trilogy from what i'm gathering might have been the most planned out <laughs> he had had any of the books that's that's kind of what it seems like. Usually it's like maybe you're planning, putting in stuff for the next book in one book, but that's, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, but oh, you know what I was thinking about in the middle of reading this when it was towards mm. the beginning still? And it was the part that I was like, this is too slow and boring. And I was skimming and skimming and skimming. And I was like, like, I want to know what happened to Caitlin, but like get the show on the road. Yeah. But so when he was interacting with all these like people from Alter Rang and all these people from the army and all just people, people, people. And I was like, you know who I miss? I miss the mud people. <laughs> Why can we not hang out with the mud people again? Like bring them back into it. I don't know. You're, you don't care either. Terry Goodkind invent a reason, bring them back into it. Like we got to see Chase again, which I was like, there's mud dude. Where have you been? Can yeah. we get the mud people? <laughs> It would be nice. And then Jensen wasn't around much in this book either. But Tom was there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I miss good Kaylin content. You know, like, it's true. We haven't gotten a lot of good Kaylin chapters in a while. But the most important thing is to keep Richard and Kaylin apart. <laughs> the books that only are well, ever stand a chance of being good when chain apart. fire certainly kept them apart so it almost felt like when she was like legit gone i was like okay is this like one of those cursed monkeys paw type situations i was like okay i didn't mean she needs to be disappeared <laughs> like, just get rid of her altogether <laughs> like, like I i'm mean sorry that. i didn't mean it <laughs> oh goodness <laughs> what what oh no this is a um charlotte's web reference oh <laughs> interesting the true purpose is the purpose of the box huh is like that that's right? why the boxes of orden were invented as a counter to chain fire yeah, do you think so well that's what richard says yeah. like when he marches in to tell off zed yeah. and, and nathan he's like um but what you they're like He's like, bags, Richard, that's snake vine. And he's like, yeah, it is. The boxes of Ordner in play. And mm -hmm. they were invented to counteract, boom, chain fire. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> Although it doesn't totally make sense. I don't know. I, it's fine. I mean, well, like, the, the boxes of Ordner were invented, like, years and years and years ago. So, oh, yeah. like, they were like, why did they make the boxes of Ordner? So, in theory, right. this is why. But how? Like, how do they counteract chain fire? I don't. Well, that. remember, like, when you put the boxes of Orden into play, then there's like options for like what you get to do with them. And that's yeah. in like Dark and Raw. We know what he wanted to do with it. But one of right. them is like where you basically become master of the universe. And like, in so doing, you'd be able to like put things back to where they're supposed to be, where you could like reverse the chain fire event. So I'm guessing Richard is going to go OP and like, instead of preventing the boxes being used, he's going to use them. Interesting. Because he already has the Book of Counted Shadows in his brain, so. Right. That's an so, so they're basically like the Infinity Gauntlet. Yes. And Jagang is Thanos. Hmm. 
Well, I guess and Jigang is trying to get <laughs> the Infinity Gauntlet. Although he isn't really because the sisters don't know or he doesn't know what the sisters are up to. Oh, right. Because they're like technically not working for him. I well, they're, yeah, like... they're, well, they're working for the Keeper. Yeah. They don't care about Jigang other than he's kind of beneficial because he keeps killing people. So the Keeper likes that. Right. Why they're doing that? God knows. Um... Yeah. Yeah, I mean everybody changed in kind of interesting ways, I think. I I did really like the meeting of Anne and Nikki where she's like, excuse me, and she's like, I'm on your team now, get over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Richard's I, fine, but <laughs> honestly, I love Nikki. I think she's excellent. Or like when she tells um, General what's his face when she's like, um, he's like, you look familiar. She's like, yeah, you might know me as Death's mistress. Mm -hmm. He's like, (laughs) he's like, well, (laughs) you're here with Richard, so I guess it's fine. I love how she like occasionally pulls out the Death's mistress card to use it for some wily way. It's great. Um, The backup on Mana. That seems, I don't know if that's how you spell it, but yeah, I think that's. I think that's how you spell it. That might be how you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why not? Why not have? Well, because the then Kayla's Kaled will become a jealous woman again as soon as Dushailu shows up again, and I do not like that form of Kaylin. That's not either. like Kaylin. That is, I agree. I agree. Um, of course he's going to use because Kaylin. Of course he's going to use the boxes because Kaylin. Because Kaylin. Ultimately, nothing matters if Kaylin is not in his world. So, yep. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, save the world. Maybe <laughs> save Kaylin. Definitely. <laughs> Armies are invading. Your people need you. But <laughs> my girlfriend's missing. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Jessica. And is annoying when it comes to prophecy again without Kaylin. Yep. Which, like, I do think. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I just don't read a lot of romance, and that's one of the things that does irritate me when I encounter it, and that's probably one of the reasons why romance is not for me. The idea of, like, some dude being like, the world doesn't matter. I need to find and save my woman, which, like, I, I kind of understand why that's a feeling that, like, you trump everything else to the dude, that he will forget his duty, forget this, and just, like, put it all aside to go save you. But I'm just like, no, like, that's, yeah. that's awful. I mean, I think for, like, a normal person, maybe, but for somebody as powerful as Richard, it's, like... Well, but so, especially with someone as powerful as Richard, because, like, again, like, if your people need, like, you have responsibilities as the Lord Rawl, so you can't just, like, be, like, oh, my girlfriend's missing, I need to do that instead. You're, like, no. So, I what I like, though, is that Kaylin isn't just, like, the girl he's in love with. Like, she affects prophecy, and her not being there has affected a bunch of other things, which is why I would have liked it that Kaylin being Mm -hmm. gone is the plan isn't that like right. oh, they need a confessor for the boxes of Orton because like then it wouldn't be then Richard would be right when he's like it's not just that I'm looking for this girl that I love and you're like you're being selfish and deluded like maybe you think I'm deluded but I'm not being selfish she's important not just to me she's important to everything and to everyone but and no. we're in trouble without her so it's not like I like that it's not just like I don't care about Dahara I need Kayla which is like a little bit how Richard is anyway mm, is totally but there is at least like he's also able to be like but also, <laughs> she matters, like, yeah. to everybody. <laughs> well, I mean, it's him noticing how different everyone is without Kaylin. Like, I see what the world is without her. Like, the impact she's had on everyone, and they don't even realize. So, when I love how he's like, except Nikki. Nikki might be better without Kaylin. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, Anne says, oh, you're a sister of the light now. No, I'm just Nikki. Yeah, I know. Anne's upset about that. Well, no, you have to be a sister. And they're like, you know what? Is now the time for this, Anne? Can we take? <laughs> He's like, uh, yeah, no, I'm not. That's uh, so funny. Yeah, Nikki has deconstructed, and she is done. For real. <laughs> for real. Yeah. Love to oh. see it. Mm-hmm. It's great. It's so funny. Which, like, if Anne had met Nikki after. The previous book, um, is it the previous? No, not Naked Empire. Whichever is the one where Kaylin burned her book and she starts being like, what did I do to Nathan? What did I do with my blind devotion to this like 
position. I was so wrong for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. If that Anne had now met Nikki and Nikki was like, I'm not a sister. I'm just Nikki. That Anne would have been like, yeah, that works for me. (laughs) But because Kaylin's not there. Because Kaylin's not there. Yeah. Yep. That's interesting. I feel like there was something else I was going to say and it is now escaping me. Maybe it'll come back to my brain. Um, well, I get now why the covers of these books are so, like, non-concrete after all the other covers are very concrete. Yeah. It's Kaylin. She's But it's also, I mean, the whole notion the of, like, memory and perception and, like, what is real and, like, yeah. that. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the covers I did think it was kind of weird, like... Um, these people who live in some place that you can only get to through the sliff who've just been existing for What was like, that? I was like, who are, who are you? What is this? Yeah, I don't know. It's like they just lived to care for tombs, it seems like. Like, maybe the wizards had them care for tombs and they just kind of stayed there because of prophecy? That's like what it's... It was so last minute. I was yeah. like, I'm sorry, what? Especially because we got the, you know, he like does that where he like throws in a POV chapter from someone else, and you're like, apparently this is going to be the a thing in this book now. Mm-hmm. So when we got that, I was like, I thought we'd get a little more with that to understand it, but no, nope. it was just a quick like, oh, by the way, I haven't told you yet. This is a thing over here. Okay, so when we get to it, now you'll now you'll now know. you'll know why it matters and what it is. <laughs> I mean, it's basically <laughs> like in a YouTube video when. Um, Terry Goodkind just went like, sorry, editing Terry here. Um, I realized that I didn't tell you about this thing yeah. over here. Okay, you're all caught up now. Back to the story. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> That's totally what it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know I had something else I wanted to say about this, and I just, I can't i do pers- uh consistently like the sliff as a concept though yeah it's one of the cooler concepts in this world it is and i like the way that she talks mm-hmm. like it feels like a non-living entity or i mean like or if not not living but like you know what i mean mm-hmm. like her sentience like seems otherworldly yeah and i like how she says you know like i am long enough we will travel like it's just, <laughs> i really like it i feel like there's a lot of stuff he does kind of clumsily and is kind of clunky about stuff. But the sliff, I'm like, A plus on that. Mm-hmm. Well done. Yeah. No, I like her too. Because like Shoda giving him information in this and explaining what the blood beast is with so many specifics about like, but it can't do that, but it wouldn't do this. And that wouldn't work the way you think it does. And if you try to do this, that wouldn't be possible because the nature of it is not the nature of the. And it's just like yeah. on and on and on and on and on. And I was like, no. <laughs> no it's too much it's too many it's too convoluted there's too many explanations for this so that's why i feel like the sliff is like keep it simple we had a very you know interesting explanation for where she came from and how mm-hmm. why she is the way she is mm-hmm. and it works and it's simple and like when she talks she doesn't like ex- go on and on explaining how you can or cannot travel in her and right. how what the mechanism of her silver is she's just like i am long enough we will travel <laughs> i'm just like this feels magical well yeah done. yes yeah, the whole blood beast thing was, I was like, so it's whatever you decide it's going to be, <laughs> basically, <laughs> like, in a given moment. It was, I mean, honestly, like, if Shoda uh, had literally just been like, look, like, uh, you, uh, all, all the protests Richard gives her of like, well, everything has a nature and it must be predictable. If Shoda was like, look, it's not. It's just not. Okay? Like, I don't know. It's not. And if it is, I don't know how. You know, like, but she just like so many explanations that felt like Terry was arguing against whoever was like in the room pitching like yeah. arguments against him, and he was like, "I'm going to put all of the explanations for why that actually doesn't work in the book." In and you're the like, actual book. Oh my god! But she wouldn't though. <laughs> yeah, fair. It's a little unnecessary. I do think it's interesting too that Richard gives away the sort of truth. In this book which of course as soon as he did that i was like i'm sure it's gonna pay off in his favor that he did that there's a reason and then lo and behold of course there always is he's never yeah. wrong even when he's wrong he's not wrong yeah yes that's yep mm-hmm. yeah 
not nearly as bad as Naked Empire. No. Soul of the Fire is looking real good <laughs> compared to Naked Empire. Listen, yeah, Naked Empire was not. I will not read that one again. That was not good. Yeah. It's been an interesting, um, an interesting journey reading this entire series. <laughs> yeah. It has its pros and its cons. It does. For sure. I think it has some real highlights. Like there are some books that I just the love. Slip. You know who else I miss? And I I would love to see a last minute return of Gratch. Oh yeah, Gratch. We haven't seen Gratch. I would like a surprise rescue. You that know? would be excellent. Like just Gratch that. surprise coming in clutch when you're like, who's saving me from this beastie? Oh my God, it's my bestie Gratch. Where you been? You got your own pups? That's so cute. Can they say hi to their Uncle Richard? Yeah, I want to see Gratch. I... Oh, okay. We got an explanation. <laughs> Never wrong. I was like, I don't know what this means, but okay. Now I, okay. Get out of here, Urza. <laughs> the, Urza says this on the day that we find out that Urza did not love First Law. Just very bold. Very bold. Wow. Wow. Urza, how did you even decide to be here tonight? <laughs> Choosing violence. <laughs> yes. Yes! Scratch, love Richard. And Scarlet! Yeah! What happened to all the great animal companions? Come on. <laughs> you put it right in front of me. You can't expect me not to read it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, I mean, that's the thing is, I think some of these books are genuinely really good. I think the, the series goes downhill after a while. And then this is like a slight bump back in the right direction it's at least like relatively enjoyable to read, but, uh, but yeah <laughs> Jessica no what <laughs> oh my gosh okay okay all right Nora I mean it's you're not wrong that is probably kind of as yeah scratch needs to come back we would love to see more scratch I wish he'd write a plot where Richard is wrong, though. That would be great. But he can't because Richard is him and he's never wrong, Leanna. I mean, this would have been a great time to do it is like if he gets loses the sword and is yeah. actually wrong for once. But I know he's the seeker. The sword is just a tool. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's right. And honestly, okay. Um, if we're talking about property ownership, mm -hmm. just a quick technicality. Mm -hmm. so that isn't Samuel's sword. Because Samuel's sword is gone. Richard created this sword as a replacement. Oh, yeah. You're right. I'm just saying. You're right. But Samuel doesn't know that. It's a magical object. He should have known immediately. Maybe it was reincarnated. So it's kind I'm of his sword. Saying. You're right. You're right. Um, I agree, Priscilla. I think he is a good storyteller. It's just not what he cares the most about in his books. I and I except for when yeah. he does. Sometimes like he gets a real high and it's like <laughs> getting real storied. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes he's like, I care about my political soapboxing more than the story. Which also I think he cared about political soapboxing more so in later books. Like yeah. he wasn't really I'm not saying there wasn't any kind of messaging. But there wasn't these like straight up soapboxing moments in the first couple of books because Richard was kind of wrong sometimes. Like that's why Stone of Tears is my favorite forever and mm. ever now because like him being so blockheaded and wrong for like that whole book. And then the Sisters of the Light, who he regards as his enemies, becoming his allies and him realizing it's not that simple and mm. realizing how wrong he was about things. And the Palace of the Prophets is such a cool place. Like that's definitely my favorite book. Yeah. I mean, I think. Is that my favorite? Like, that's definitely a highlight of the series. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I... Yeah, I mean, that's... That's one of my favorites as well. Um, oh, interesting point. Didn't the Sword of Well, the I think we talked about that when Richard did that, and we were like, not only did he just create a new mm -hmm. version, it was, like, exact in all of it like it has the memories so it has it. the memories and everything of course because of course that would be <laughs> oh okay 
Also, I realized there was a comment that, like, YouTube wanted to hide. Hold on. So maybe it'll... I don't know if it's going to show up here. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> um, and I wanted to see... What did I rate everything in this? I'm curious now. Um, Yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I think Stone of Tears is also probably my favorite of the ones we've read. Like, looking at them. Yep. Well, I think it's unlikely that any of the ones that we're going to read now, even if they're pretty good, that they'll be better. No. Who knows? Maybe the little novella. Dead of Bones. <laughs> When did he? I I know it chronologically, like in the story, is a prequel. But when did he write it? Um, nineteen ninety. Like, the... It came out in nineteen ninety eight. So like, how many of the books had he written was... when he wrote that? So it came out the same year as Temple of the Winds. Okay, it's still pretty early Terry. Then it's yeah, not like full no soapbox Terry. No. So hopefully it'll be fun. He's in <laughs> that's kinky Terry era, <laughs> so it should be true. a good time. Yep, we'll see what we get in that novella in December. Because, like, another thing that has changed is that we don't... I guess we saw some of... Mm, in Pillars of Creation with Oba. But, like, I feel like the first couple books, there was just like, a lot more, like, on-page essay. And, yeah. like, just also not not even just essay, but just, like, weird kinky shit. Yeah. And there's, like, a lot less of that now. He's just, like, yeah. he's on the campaign trail. No kinky shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's kind of true. <laughs> I agree with this. I do give him credit also for writing. Like, he, Kaylin, at her best, is one of my favorites. Well, just the number of characters in Chainfire that are female characters that are, like, mm -hmm. important to the plot, they are mainly females. Yeah. And he and the thing is, is he, he writes good female characters that aren't I mean, really, the only male characters in Chainfire are Richard himself, Zed, and Nathan. Yeah. And everybody else is women. And Jigang in the background. But yeah, that's true. I agree. Samuel totally read like Gollum in this book. Yes. Yes. I mean, he always has read like Gollum. But yeah. yeah. But yeah. Agreed. Um. <laughs> I mean, this is true. Magic does whatever Terry wants it to do. I mean, honestly, yeah. That's, yep. Which, whatever. I think you just have to kind of go for it. Go with it. Um, yeah, Stone of Tears is a good one. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, that's not a great voice. The nip stuff in this? No. What? What nips? Did you notice this? I mean, I, I did... told you I was skimming a lot, so I might have literally missed it by skimming over it. The nip torture had a cameo in this one? I did not notice that. I probably, I must have uh, zoned out. I don't doubt, but again, I'm lots of thing was going on. Yeah. Kara, Nikki, yes. I love, yes. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, he has some really great female characters, which I mean, even is, the Sisters of the Dark, which are the main antagonists in this book, you know. They they're are. interesting, yeah. Well, and that's that's the thing. So, like, I do think he has a lot, he has stuff going for him. He just also has some flaws. For sure. When Nikki... Oh. oh, right. I was skimming a lot there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because I knew we were pretty close to finding out something about what happened to Caitlin. I was like, yeah, yeah, Nikki is a girl boss. She will handle the situation. She's in no danger. Blah, blah. War, blah, blah. She bested them all. Blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> so you were having a great time with this. <laughs> It was just so much filler. And I was like, look, I know you teased us with this mystery. And I know to some degree, like, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want to just give people the answer. You know, you kind of like build the anticipation because you want them to be like, what is it? What's the answer? What's the answer? But this was too, too much filler. And I was like, no, just tell me the answer. <laughs> well, and I think the problem is this because it seems to have been conceptualized as a trilogy and maybe it shouldn't have been. Or it could have just been a shorter book. You could have cut a lot of that out. <laughs> or it should have cut, yeah, or that. But Especially because, like, if stuff's happening in the lead up to the answer that you actually want, 
but that all that stuff does still feel very important that you do kind of also need to know about. And you are also curious and, and curious to see how that shakes out. And you're mm-hmm. all, and not everyone has plot armor. So I would, you know, be as hooked by that while I'm like, oh, I don't want to know what the end of the mystery is. But like before we get there, oh, shoot, oh, shoot, oh, shoot. All this stuff is like also crazy. But this I'm like, I know she's fine. I know he's going to be fine. I know he's going to find it. I know she's going to be just like, I'm just like, I don't, this isn't important. This battle is completely irrelevant. <laughs> just get to the answer. You're just dragging this out now. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, the shorter might have been a more shorter version might have been a more interesting read. I can see that. There you go. Could have been a duet, duology instead of a trilogy. That's kind of the vibe I was getting. I was like, I feel like we're stretching this out just to save plot for the next book. So, but you know what? At least. But at the same time, since we had stretched it so much, I was almost disappointed that we got a Kaylin chapter from her perspective. Because I'm like, mm-hmm. well, if we're not resolving this in this book, then just keep it a mystery. Keep us from knowing anything about where she's at. Because, like, if we took out her perspective altogether, then mm-hmm. we still have Richard showing up and being like, this is the statue that I was telling you about. And right. then we have the Sister of the Dark being like, here was my master plan. In this essay, I will tell you, like, as she's bleeding out. <laughs> so, like, we actually didn't learn anything of vital importance from the Caitlin's perspective because Richard figured it all out and told us all of it again. Yeah. So, like, we were basically, that's why also I was skimming. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure I learned this from Caitlin's chapter. So, like, Richard finding it out, I'm like, duh. <laughs> I, mean, I know this already yeah i guess i feel like her chapter is is more about creating the tension that she doesn't remember who she is either i feel like we could open the next book with that i mean you could you could yeah like it's basically a kaylin yeah. free book so at that point yeah. literally make it a kaylin free book yeah where like then it's truly feels like she's completely missing because yeah. she's not around no one remembers her she's gone and when Richard is like finally found a sign that she's there, oh then God. you would you would also be as shocked, even though you knew all along mm-hmm. that she was real, as K- uh, Kara and Nikki. When he's like, "Look what I found! Look, I was not wrong. Look at what's right. here." But by then, we're like, "Yeah, no, but I already know because I already saw this." No, but the mystery was, what did she leave behind? No, that's not. <laughs> I don't care about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I mean, you're probably right. I think he just doesn't know how to do it because he's always just completed most of the story in one book and it's probably feels weird to him or something. Who knows? But I don't know. I don't know. It feels but, honestly like a first draft decision that I would be like on revision. I'd be like, you know what? Come to think of it. I thought I needed this chapter to tell my audience what's up, but actually they find this out basically later and it would be more interesting for them to find it out later than already telling them so let me just cut this i wonder if his editors were just relieved that this wasn't naked empire (laughs) get it out there before people completely give up yeah exactly (laughs) yeah well i mean i think i'm looking forward to phantom it should be interesting and Yeah. yeah don't really have a mystery anymore but no, I am still interested. I yeah. guess the mystery is how is he going to solve it this time? I mean, I expect that I'll either way have a good time with it. I'm like, okay, at least we're back to enjoyable Terry, not awful. But so Terry. is the next book technically not a sort of truth book? Because he doesn't have the sort of truth. Somebody has the sort of truth. So as long as it exists in the universe, it's a sort of truth book? Right. Okay. Right. And Richard is the seeker regardless. Or, you know, there's always the interpretation I'm sure people took from our last live stream. You know what I also could have done without is Shoda desperately wanting Richard to stay with her. I was like, I know he is hot and all, but like, does every woman need to want Richard? Is that necessary? Yes, because it's Terry. It's a Terry stand in and ever he wants. It's, you know. Um, yeah, I'm ready for a Kalen book too. I just had a terrible idea. Like, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I'm just Share with the class. <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking what the like, uh, you know, 
adult version of this would be with a different definition of sort the the sort of truth. <laughs> oh god. I just I've been thinking about it ever since we had our like because of what happened in our last live stream because it was like Naked Empire sort of truthfully read along. I was like, oh oh I know what people think. Anyway. <laughs> Somebody thinks that's funny. I feel like, like, it, it, I, I wonder if there's, like, fanfic out there somewhere that did something Undoubtedly. Like that. There probably is. Oh, man. Now I'm just thinking about the innuendo between Kaylin and Richard that would be going on. Oh. Referencing yeah. the sword. You're welcome. <laughs> Why? Uh, Shota was thirsty, Jessica. I mean, for books that have, like, a lot of kinky fuckery, stuff between Kaylin and Richard is always so, like, pure. Yeah, of course. Because she's... It's the, like, you know, Madonna whore thing. Um, someone saying don't read Confessor. I don't know why. I don't know if it was because complaining about Shota being thirsty. Maybe Shota's gonna be real thirsty in Confessor. That's very possible. Shota came... Listen, Shoda is into any powerful man. That no, shows but I up. love, I love how, and this happens in the books too. Um, but that like all of the like older sorceress women are all into Zed because he can apparently get it as well, which is where apparently Richard gets it from. Because mm -hmm. like Addie is all about Zed. Oh yeah, and, yeah. Um, uh, he comes by it honestly, I suppose. There was someone else that was like flirting with Zed a lot. In oh yeah, books. well he had there was like that woman at the pa at the the like the palace. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's always got ladies around. It's funny. Um Jessica consult AO3 and check back in, let us know what you find. Should be interesting. Yeah, I kind of I I kind of like Shoda too, except when she gets all thirsty. Thirsty. Oh. Oh, oh, Amanda's saying, I think she must have missed the earlier part of the live stream where we fixed this problem. Yeah. Yes. yes. Thank you, Amanda. We got it. <laughs> yeah, correction will be issued yes. forthwith. We got it. Oh. Does that, that mean we will definitely think it should have ended differently? <laughs> I mean, that's entirely possible. That should be. Yeah, we could do that for sure. How we would have ended it. I mean, we probably would anyway. Should be fun. I do want to see more of Nathan. We just I barely get glimpses of him now. Mm -hmm. And I love Nathan. And it's true. Nathan is also like hot stuff. All the ladies all are the, in him. All the raw the raw the, yeah, all the the raw slush. Uh, I mean, he gets hotness apparently sex appeal from both sides from both of his sides. family. So like when they said that he got the gift from both sides, <laughs> they weren't talking about magic. <laughs> 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 oh no all right jessica is on the case i'm i i am curious i feel like there's gotta be somebody probably wrote some fanfic out there somewhere for this. if not now you know what you should do mm -hmm. oh i would like that nathan what's been hinted that there is something between them yeah i think we get some of that oh no not the cat. Uh, so funny. I hope. Well, yeah. And even if he wasn't actively nice. doing anything, um, to like uh manipulate prophecy, he was still like a fun energy, like to have in the room, yeah. to be participating in the conversation. Like it was always a good time having Nathan around. I agree. Always saying interesting things. He livens things up. And in a different way than Zed. I feel like both of them are really interesting, entertaining people, but in very different ways. Zed is more like goofy. Yes. Nathan is kind of enigmatic and yes. chaotic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. He's not more OP than Richard, and we get lots of Richard. <laughs> That's true. Plus, also, I feel like Richard. Nathan is um, as single-minded, and he's, like, one of the only characters that can give Richard as good as he gives. 
Mm. And I like seeing the two of them together specifically because like when Richard is around Nathan, like Nathan says stuff that Richard doesn't immediately go like, well, I have outthought you because I am the main character. Like yeah. Nathan usually says stuff that makes Richard go, hmm. Good point. Can't argue with that. He has been around for like a thousand years, so. Yeah. You know. He knows his stuff. Okay. I, uh, Jessica, have you found anything yet? Because I feel like we're probably going to wrap up here pretty soon. <laughs> I don't oh, know. There's... Uh, yeah, I'm just curious. But I don't know that I have much else to to say about this one. I'm yeah. just glad I wasn't miserable. I think I think it's pretty good given how many books are in the series and how much crap the series gets that there's really only two books that I feel very negatively towards. It's not mm -hmm. bad. Oh, Nathan has more of a role in the Nikki Chronicles. Hmm. Interesting. That is in its favor. <laughs> he kind of does he does indeed uh, all right yes do that please let us know should be interesting you know have you seen the like um from, this is years ago the like um i think they only did it with harry potter and the goblet of fire where they like did a trailer for it where they like edited it to look like it's like a <laughs> a romance movie Sorry. and uh <laughs> Put this on the book jacket. I'm just glad I was not miserable. <laughs> but uh, for Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, when they like re-edited the trailer to make it look like it's this like romantic drama, and so then when they at the end of the trailer, you know, when they say the title of the movie, they're like Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. <laughs> so now I'm thinking like Sword of Truth being in like pronounced with the same emphasis. Oh man. What have you done? Sorry. Kind of. <laughs> Is this book Chain Fire? <laughs> oh, it has too many connotations. Yeah, I just. Uh, well. No. Yeah. Anybody have any final thoughts before we wrap this up? We're nearing an hour, and I feel like we have kind of uh, pretty we well. We fixed the plot. We told them how to make it better. We're mm -hmm. excited to fix the next one. Job done. <laughs> <laughs> we came, we saw, we fixed. As we do. Um, sword <laughs> of truth. Will he slay her? I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh okay well thank you everybody for joining us for this discussion we'll be back on Lana's channel with phantom next month and it should be fun there's only 45 wow that's not very many i wonder if any of them are good interesting Maybe somebody should go write some more um, Sword of Truth fanfics. While you're at it, go write some First Law fanfics. There's not nearly enough Giselle Logan fanfic, and by which I mean not nearly enough, there is none. So go to it. <laughs> is there really none? That's interesting. I don't think I found any, and I was specifically looking for it. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you. I'm so glad that you've been enjoying this. <laughs> I, it makes me happy that people have been, oh, nine of them are explicit. Interesting. Okay. Thank you, Jessica, for doing, doing work on that. Um, yeah, I'm glad people have been kind of finding this here and there as we've been doing it through the year, because I think we knew going in that it wasn't going to be like a blockbuster uh, <laughs> Read along. We're series. reading the series that everyone likes to officially and objectively declare to be the worst of all time. It's not yeah. gonna bring in <laughs> the crowds. Surprisingly, unless no. one of them happens to be named a thing that sounds similar to a popular series, <laughs> and then they're mad at you for tricking yeah. them. Yes. 
Look, Terry named his book first. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Who's copying who? What do you, wait, who do, who, what do people think is being copied? They don't actually think it's being copied, but they got confused because Faith of the Fallen sounds similar to Faithful and the Fallen. Oh. By John Gwynn. Right. So they thought that you were talking about. Because it's newer. And popular. And popular. Oh, Beth, that's interesting. Fanfics for these were probably printed. Yeah, because I guess some of it came out early enough that some of it would have been like that. That's funny. Oh, they were Amanda. sent by Carrier Pigeon cool. and written in Quill Ink. I love that people are so happy about this, though. I, I I feel like there's like a like a small but dedicated fan base for this series. And mainly like, women. Mainly, yeah, a lot of women. Not all, but yeah. Was it Chad who had the title? <laughs> it should have been, huh? Uh, Kaylin and Kara. Ooh. That's not surprising, especially because okay. the show on the mm -hmm. show, Kaylin and Kara, I think, had a lot of tension. Yeah, especially when they updated Kaylin's costume to look more like Kara's. Yeah. I okay, okay, interesting. Hmm. Well, we do we do aim for honesty, so glad we can provide some of that it's it is a mixed bag because there are some things about it that are great and some things about it that are not so i mean let's let's but we i think we just feel like it deserves credit for the things it does well i mean i swear like patrick rothfuss should start paying me for the number of times that i have quoted him saying to love something because it's easy that's like putting a penny in your pocket mm -hmm. but to love something despite to yep. know the flaws and love them too that is rare and pure and perfect it's a good quote it's so good. It's a good quote. Well, Renee, it's mostly fun. Plus, we committed to it. Like, we commit to things with other people. We do them. Yeah, basically, I've been grudgingly blaming Bethany for this all year, and she's been angrily blaming me for this all year. So we angrily force each other to do this. Accountability. Exactly. And I'm like, Leanna, why did we agree to do two year-long read-alongs in I'm one like, year? I'm like, it was your idea. No, it wasn't. <laughs> It's okay. It's been it's been good. I feel also, you know, we'll get to the end of the year and have such a sense of accomplishment. Like, think about what we have read through two very long series. We we're not done yet. We, we have yet say we have. We it's will have. I said we will have. Oh, okay. We will have. We're nearing we're nearing the end. Um looked for the books and not the TV. Oh, I feel like I can confidently say that you will find that Wisdom of Crowds is a much more impressive conclusion <laughs> than <laughs> I I am certain that will be the case. Yes. Yes. Uh Yeah, see and here's the problem is that it was going this was coming out concurrently to Wheel of Time and Shannara. Right. I mean, like they were all coming out around the same time. So like it, it, they were all copying Tolkien. They were all copying Tolkien. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's like, that was what everybody was doing at the time in different ways. So that's what know. it meant to be a fantasy writer. Yeah. Fantasy I mean, means Tolkien. Or it did during this period. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I just think it's absurd because all like they were probably all working on writing those books at the same time so yes it has been a while tried no problem oh i love that it's fun of course there is oh no great love that i don't want to read that one. Oh, good i'm glad you guys are having fun I mean, I don't, listen, like, I don't have a problem DNFing series that I genuinely don't like, but, like, but I don't, also, I don't know. like, because my mom, who doesn't read any fiction of any kind, but for some reason has an opinion about it, mm -hmm. um, when it comes to fantasy, which, I don't know if you know this, but that falls into the category of fiction, so she doesn't read any of that either, and she's always complaining that, why is fantasy always series, and I always ask her, in what way does this affect you, but... She's like, why is it always series? Why is it always series? 
And I'm like, well, if you've bothered to invent a world, like you may as well get make some use out of it. And I feel like the same is somewhat true for the reader because it takes a lot out of you to like acquaint yourself with a world. And so if you've bothered to like come become familiar with a world, it's kind of nice to just like have some more books in the same world. You're like, I know this world. I'll just read yeah. some more in that world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's reasonable. Anger and mutual blame are the two pillars of any proper relationship. I mean, it's like kind of one of those like um those it's not a trust fall, but it's like when you're back to back and you like are able to sit down because like your backs are pressed up against each yeah. other. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what this is. We're yeah. like forcing <laughs> each other to stay standing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the entire year. No, it's been I mean it's mostly been fun. So it's it's all right. And Abercrombie's been been great. I'm excited to finally complete this. Oh, Dragon Riders of Print. I don't know. That hasn't been something we have talked about, but that vaguely sounds familiar to me, but I'll be honest, I don't really know. What it's that is. Anne McCaffrey. That also sounds familiar, but I'll be honest. I don't really know yeah, what that is. I okay. They were they, they were really popular when I was growing up. I read some of them. Maybe one day. I don't like, know. It doesn't sound like wholly unfamiliar. Like I, I feel like yeah, I'm sure in you my would life I've heard that name. Yeah. I think if you saw the covers, you would be like, oh, yeah. Like they're like, yeah. Saw them at my library. Mm -hmm. yeah. Probably. Um, we have discussed, I don't know what we're doing for sure next year. Are we still, we've talked about maybe doing Red Rising or something else. I thought I we know. agreed on The Witcher. Oh, yeah, Witcher. You're right. We did. We agreed. I was like, we were discussing this. You're right. We did agree on The Witcher. We're doing a Witcher read along next year. <laughs> Thank you. I did know that. It's just in the moment I was like, wait, which will be great because I've only read the short story collections. And those books are meaty. There's a lot to them. It should be fun. Yeah. So stay tuned for 2023. Yes. We're going to do The Witcher series. So gonna be great. Um, tell your mom why, why are there seasons in a show? The Amanda, good good point. Your mom does watch television. So. My mom is immune to logic. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, you want to revisit a world. <laughs> Please do come along. Should be fun. Um, I know. Listen, we discussed that or is a the new hardbacks. Will many of us use this as an excuse to get the new hardbacks? Is Probably. that how we arrived at the conclusion that we should do the witcher? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> On the list of reasons, was it first among not equals? I mean it was it was it was up there. <laughs> Yeah. Um, the Jurini's like, oh. Yes, I love how everybody's like, yes, get the new editions. Yeah. Interesting. Renee, interesting. Yeah. Well, and we actually have them all in paperback, but I've only read one of them. My husband read them all, but like he is not gentle with books, so they are not in great condition. <laughs> So <laughs> they're in perfectly fine condition, but nevertheless. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny? There have been times where we've done like buddy reads together, and I'll be like, I have the hardcover, but I'm gonna buy you a paperback <laughs> to read because I don't want you messing up the hardcover. <laughs> I mean, I I it. buy my I mean, even though I'm I treat my books well no matter what. I still buy a reading copy for a book if I have like a very nice copy of it. I'm like, yeah. well, but I'm not going to read that copy of it. I'll go buy a crappy paperback of it. Mm -hmm. So that if in the event I accidentally harm it, it will be fine. Right. Yeah. Uh, I have watched my spouse play Witcher 3. I, I have played like a tiny, a tiny bit. Yeah. I know a bit about it, but I like the show. Um, hmm. A game along. I pro Leanna is not a big gamer. I'm not, but I do currently have my brother's PlayStation, and I have an Xbox. I and literally we, and have. We actually have the, the games reason that I have has played them. So the we reason could. that I have my brother's PlayStation is so that in theory I could play Witcher, but also who has the time? 
you know what I've been playing is uh, Dreamlight Valley. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I'm thinking of doing well, a video on it because it's it's fun. It's I, so much better. It's it's so much better than Animal Crossing. It's like Animal, Animal Crossing, Crossing, but better with more plot and it quests. Sound awful to me. Yeah, but it's like, not it's not your vibe. <laughs> but my <laughs> brother keeps wanting me to play just like games in general. And like I do want to play Witcher. Like I just I don't have time. But that being said, whenever he's over and he wants to play, like that's not the kind of game that you can like really like have fun playing together. Mm-hmm. Um and what I really want to play is like the one game he doesn't have. He only has it on Switch. He doesn't have it on PlayStation, so we can't play Cuphead, which I really want to play. Interesting. So he almost was he was hoping yeah, last time he was over, he was like, if it's on sale, I'll buy it. And of course it wasn't on sale. At this point, I'm like, I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah. Whereas we have we have a Switch and we have Xbox. I don't really use the Switch most, but we, we have Xbox and we've got the Xbox Live there or the whatever the paid thing is, because my husband games a lot. Which I definitely prefer to having a spouse that is into sports. So it's cool. <laughs> like I don't have to like I'm much more interested in video games than sports. I used to play more video games before. We well, video children. games too, they don't really like interrupt your schedule in the way that sports do, where you have to drop everything oh, to watch the sport. Plus they're boring. Anyway, I think they're boring. I'm glad other people enjoy them, but they're not interesting to me. I mean, it's just easier to like schedule your life around gaming than sports. Yeah, that is true. I do wish like cuz I did I used to play a lot more before we had kids and now because a lot which is why I'm enjoying Dreamlight Valley cuz I can play it for a little while and it's fun whereas like most of the games I used to be into like I would need hours at a time and I just don't have that very often anymore maybe one day I'll get back into it but um well guys go tell my brother to get Cuphead so I can play it there you go well they're gonna do whatever wildflowers oh Jessica is this the one you were talking about with like the farming stuff I just, I think the thing is, is like, I want something that's chill, but also lets me explore things and gives me some plot and quests, but doesn't require me to do a lot of fighting. Like, I like plot driven and character driven video games with open worlds and exploration. Like, that's fun for me. Dragon Age is great. I like Dragon Age. One day, maybe we'll get a new one. Um, See, this is what I hear. I am interested. I feel like the fighting is going to be challenging because I don't play that much anymore but maybe I can just play it on easy mode or something I don't know if you want to try the game we could do some gaming what if we figure it out I wonder I wonder how hard it is to figure out how to like connect things to like twitch streaming I don't know I can't let people see how bad I am at playing witcher (laughs) My brother was already laughing at me, and I was like, you can't want me I know, to play but it would be and funny. then laugh at me when I do. But that's the whole point. I feel like it would be very comedic. We could, like, play live, and people could laugh. It would be great. Or we could do it for patrons. <laughs> oh, no. My ego's on the line here. <laughs> like, my brother, you know, I grew up with him, so he's seen me at my worst. So if he sees how bad I am at gaming, is whatever. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> wow okay i I will say since i haven't had the joy of playing cuphead because of reasons i have been enjoying the cuphead tv show on netflix which is a lot of fun oh jessica this is intriguing wildflowers is not a farming game it is all plot and character storylines listen i think there's some great storytelling there can be great storytelling in games That's there's a I... game that my brother has gotten me to play mm-hmm. and like i have played it for quite a while with him around and he just watches me play and i'm like is this fun for you and he's like yeah i'm like okay <laughs> <laughs> but oh god i can't remember what it's called which is unhelpful but um i think it's like it looks more like a pc game but we were playing it on playstation mm-hmm. um I want to say it's the name of a city, but it's like where where basically all of your decisions have consequences in the story, and like oh oh, I think maybe I've played this. Maybe. It's like really dark and very oh. gross and weird. Okay, maybe it's not. Oh, I've, 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 okay, okay, I have played a few games like that though, which is really interesting. I love it. I when, doubt my like, brother will see in time because okay. he never answers, but I'll text him 
Okay, it's probably a different one then, but like there are games. Oh, you know what was fun I played before? (laughs) This is like the guy I like. I feel like the video games I like are indicative of like the books I like, but like Fable is a fun one that's like fantasy where your choices influence the plot and stuff and what happens in the kingdom. That I think is kind of fun. Um, Disco Elysium. I just looked it up. Yeah. Oh, Oh, okay. Yeah. It's Disco Elysium. Interesting. I haven't heard of that one. It's so strange and also hilarious. So like the first time I played it, I purposely just picked the most bananas answers just to see what would happen. And (laughs) wild shit happened. (laughs) And then like my character... Okay, well, this gets, I told you it's really dark. So I, I picked the most bananas answers the whole time, and it got to the point where my character unalived himself, and I had to start over again. Oh, my God. <laughs> so- <laughs> wow. Wow. That's so your decisions sick. have consequences, is what I'm saying. No kidding. That's, like, that's intense. Huh. Sounds like fun, Jessica. Yes. Fable is, yeah, Fable is fun. I really liked Fable. Um, I think stuff like that is fun. Well, and also like the Dragon Age games are great world building, like such in-depth world building. If you want to be a nerd like me and read all of the books you can pick up, which you don't have to. It doesn't further the plot, but it's interesting. Have a good weekend, Beth. <laughs> good night. Um, but yeah, I think that I think is is cool. I'm I'm just like much, which I mean, I guess makes sense with the books I read, but like I'm just much more interested in world building plot characters than I am in and like exploring and stuff but yeah whereas some games I'm like eh, this is pretty much all fighting eh, I don't know that's fine well, Not Disco Elysium is definitely very plot and character centric yeah it sounds like a lot though I don't know maybe it's very little, funny though <laughs> later <laughs> like the answers the characters give you for stuff like when you when you choose a bonkers reply the replies you get back from the other characters are hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Urza, yes, agree. Dragon Age is, inc- is amazing. And also it's really good with like character relationships and like, it's just, it's, uh, it's excellent. I've been waiting for years for a new one. And so I will, I will be playing that when we get one. Um, oh, we're getting uh-oh, several of these. But yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, now that we sidelined into video games for 20 minutes. I was going to say, we knew our line wasn't done because we hadn't off-roaded yet. That's true. We needed a little off-road. We, we spent were. the entire hour talking about chain fire. Yeah. That's unacceptable. No. <laughs> what kind of live stream is that? Uh, I have not. I think my husband tried it. I say i watched part of it or played a little is that the like zombie one if it's the zombie one i played a little bit and it was hard (laughs) i don't know if it's the same one (laughs) oh you know what else was fun that i didn't finish but i played a bit of was um oh god now i can't this is dumb i can't even think of the name though it's the apocalyptic like alternate history nuclear wasteland one somebody tell me in the comments what it is you know what i'm talking about i just i can't think of the title right now last of us no it's a it's like another open world rpg game it's like what if we went we like continued developing nuclear power to power everything but then now there's also been like kind of a fallout thank you yes fallout that is the one i knew somebody was gonna get it yep yeah that one was fun i liked that too i think it's made by i think it's made by the same people who do dragon age which would explain why i like both of them. you have a type i have a type yep all right y'all well uh thank you for joining us this has been fun we'll be over on lana's channel next month to but not for discuss, confessor but not for confessor for phantom <laughs> And then we'll be back on my channel for Confessor in November and then Dead of Bones in December. So we're nearing the end of the saga. We are indeed. Have a good night. We'll see you later. Bye.